Good morning, everyone. I welcome you all for the Mobile Device Manager Plus training program. I thank each and everyone for joining the webinar in your busy schedule. So my name is Ruben, and I'm associated with Manage Engine for the past five years. I do the training and implementation for all the endpoint management solutions. So here is our training schedule. It is a three-week series, and we are in the third week, the last week of the training program, where we shall see about the modern management of Windows 10 and Mac computers. Last week, we had about app management, and in the first week, we had about the device onboarding and provisioning section. In case, if you have missed the previous training session, please visit the below mentioned URL, and all the registered participants will also get the recorded video of the training via email once after the training program is over. So let's see what we have in the store for today, the training agenda. First, I'm going to give you the overview of Mobile Device Manager Plus, the general introduction about the mobile management solution and the architecture it follows and the ports it requires to manage the mobile devices. And we shall, I'll also show you how does a mobile device will be managed under our MDM solution. Followed by the overview, we shall see how the Windows 10 laptops and Macs computers can be onboarded into the management scope, followed by deploying configurations to them and adding additional security settings, how we can protect your Windows 10 laptops and Mac computers using our MDM solution. Then I'll also show you how you can silently install the application on Windows 10 and Mac computers without the user intervention. And also how we can securely distribute documents to the devices can also be seen today. And at the end, I'll also cover certain real-time scenarios and the solution which I have experienced in my support life. In case even if you have any questions during the entire training program, you can always comment in the chat section I have an expert panel right here with me who can answer your questions then and there. All right, let's see the overview of Mobile Device Manager Plus solution. So these are the popular OS platform which has been supported in our solution. The iOS devices, Android phones, Windows devices, and even Chromebooks, Apple TV, and Surface Pro tablets can also be managed under our MDM solution. And the MDM is under Manage Engine has been available in three flavors. First, the Desktop Central, which is the entire suite where it helps you to manage all your endpoints from a centralized console, be it laptop, desktop, servers, or even if you have mobile devices and the tablets, you'll be able to manage from the Desktop Central suite. And then we also offer the standalone Mobile Device Manager Plus solution which is available and both on-premise and cloud. So that you can specifically manage all your mobile devices under this product. And if you are a service provider, say you're planning to manage devices from different companies or different customers, then you, we also offer you the MSP architecture through which you'll be able to manage devices from different clients. We also provide a wide range of integration to meet all your device management needs. For an, ad, for an admin, it is always not about pushing out profiles or configurations or applications onto the device. Sometimes you might also get requests raised by the users, say they are having some issues in logging into the mobile devices. And as an admin, after checking the request, you need to have a powerful management tool like Manage in Mobile Device Manager Plus to carry out the management activities. So we seamlessly provide integrations for the help desk tools like Spiceworks, Service Desk Plus, and Zoho CRM. And in case, if you're looking for anything outside this box, we also have the API for you. So using which you can perform the integration with other tools even. So let's see the Mobile Device Manager Plus architecture. Be it Manage Engine Mobile Device Manager, or any solution, it follows the universal architecture, which involves three major components. One, the MDM server, followed by the second component, which is the notification services, which is offered by the mobile vendors and the mobile devices itself. To illustrate the architecture in a better way, 
I'll give you an example. Say as an admin, I want to locate an iOS device. So I'll send a command from the MDM console, say geo tracking or locate the device as an option, which in turn, this command will be sent to the notification service. If it is for an Apple device, the Apple push notification service will wake up the device, which makes the device to communicate with the server, which will have the command sent as locate the device, thereby the device will share its geo coordinates to the server. And as an admin, I'll be able to view the map location or the coordinates in the product UI. So if it is for Apple, it's going to be Apple push notification service. If it is for Android, the Firebase cloud messaging service will enable or wake up the device, which makes the device to communicate with the server. And for Windows, it's going to be Windows notification services. And in case if you are an on-premise user, where you don't wish to expose your MDM internal server to the internet, then we also provide you an additional component called Secure Gateway, using which you'll be able to manage your external devices. So whenever a communication comes from the external network, it gets redirected through the Secure Gateway, thereby making the internal MDM server safe and secure. And we also offer you the integration with Active Directory services for device provisioning or for authentication purposes, you'll be able to integrate your MDM server with Active Directory. So these are the list of ports used by the on-premise mobile device manager plus. So 9383 is the secure HTTPS port used for the device to communicate with the mobile device manager plus server. And 443 for the server to notification services is 443 and the communication between the devices to notification services is going to be 5223 for iOS, and these are the port details used for an Android. So in case if you would like to check more about the port information, you can always visit the below mentioned URL. So the MDM devices can be managed in different ways. Say this as you've seen the architecture, this follows the client and server architecture, right? So if you like to manage an Android device, you need to have the ME MDM app installed on them. But for iOS, Android, so for iOS, Windows or Chromebooks, you don't need to necessarily have an MDM app installed on the client. The vendor itself, Apple or Microsoft itself have provided the native client on their OS in order to manage the devices. So when it comes to managing iOS, Windows or Chromebooks, you don't need to necessarily have an app or a client app installed on the device. Only for Android, you need to have the MEMDM app installed on them. So for managing the different device types, I would recommend you to visit or check the first training program where we have discussed more about onboarding and enrollment of the mobile devices. So far, we have seen the overview about the mobile management solution. And in case, if you like to uh, discuss about your network architecture or how you, if you're a prospect or an evaluator, just checking about our MDM solution, then you can raise your request with our chat team to schedule an online demonstration where we will have a technical expert to, to have the discussion about, based on your requirement, the technician can help you in a better way. And as I shown you in the first, that is Mobile Device Manager Plus solution is offered in three flavors under Desktop Central, standalone MDM, and even the MSP architecture. So this is how the UI looks like. For Desktop Central is going to be the complete endpoint solution where you'll be able to do the legacy management and also the modern management features like geo-tracking and wiping the Windows 10 laptops or Mac computers. So we have the mobile device management as an add-on to the desktop central suite, where you'll be able to onboard your mobile devices along with Windows 10 and Mac computers. And if it's a standalone, this is how the UI looks like, where you, the enrollment section is about onboarding the devices. And here is where you can apply policies and restriction. And even if you like to upload applications, you'll be able to do it in this section. Anyway, we'll see about this, these options in detail in the upcoming slides. So now it's about onboarding Windows 10 laptops. 
So the Windows Autopilot enrollment allows the users to automatically assign the MDM profile through the business store portal. For this, the workflow will be, first you will have to integrate your MDM server with the Azure AD. Once the integration is done, you can add the devices to the Microsoft Business Store portal through which you can distribute our MDM client app to get registered. So first, in order, to in, in order to enroll or onboard the Windows 10 laptops, these are the prerequisites which you have to follow. So you need to have a valid third-party certificate added to your MDM solution. Then you need to have the Azure Administrator account and you have to purchase the adequate user license and assign the license to the required groups. If you're using the on-premise solution of MDM, then you need to upload the certificate under admin section. You have import SSL certificate option over here through which you can upload your valid SSL certificate for making the communication secure. If you're a cloud user, then I don't have to worry about third-party certificates. And first, as you could see, you have to add your MDM solution into the Azure Active Directory. So first step is going to be about that. So for this, you have to log in to the Microsoft Azure portal and you have Azure Active Directory option over here for which you can select mobility, this MDM and MAM, where you can add your application details. So if you're an on-premise user, then I'll show you the steps which you have to follow, be it the MDM, on-premise or desktop central. You can choose the first option called on-premise MDM and you can provide the name of your server here through which you can add the details. So once your application is added, you can configure the details like say I want to give the Azure access only to certain users, then instead of giving the scope for all, you can choose some and select the appropriate users account in this page. And you can also, if you have the, your own terms of use document, you can also provide the URL for it and the MDM discovery URL over here. So you can find these information from our product itself. If you go to MDM enrollment section and Azure enrollment, they will give you the terms of use document and the discovery URL over here. You can just copy paste this information in order to integrate your MDM server with the Azure Active Directory. And apart from this, you can also add additional options like exposing the API for, for performing any integration procedure. And you can also give the API access to only certain administrators. You have the scope options to define. And here you can see the application ID, which can also be derived from our product itself. So you have the option app ID URL over here, using which you can copy and paste it in the section. So this is how you add your on-premise MDM solution into the Azure Active Directory, and you can just save. When it comes to the cloud, or the integrating MDM cloud, you can just search for Manage Engine MDM. This Manage Engine MDM, which you can search under the Azure portal is strictly for the cloud users. And the setting up of MDM applications are directly imported from the Azure services itself. You can just add the Manage Engine MDM to the Azure portal. And thereby you can just configure the terms of use document and discovery URL over here. Once this is done, you can just click on save. And as we saw, you don't have to configure the application ID details because the Manage Engine MDM, the cloud version is, the details will be automatically imported once after you search for the Manage Engine MDM. So once the integration is completed, once you have integrated your MDM server, with your Azure Active Directory. You just need to add the devices to the business store portal, thereby distributing the MDM client on the Windows 10 laptops. So in order to add the devices to the store portal, let me log into the Azure portals. I can use the administrator credentials over here. And I'll go to manage section, devices, where you can create a profile. As you know, this is similar to Apple Business Manager or Zero Touch Enrollment where you can create a profile 
and assign the profile to the users for initiating the enrollment. So I can create a profile which helps the users to skip certain basic device activation. For example, the user doesn't have to provide the OnDrive or OEM registration during the initial device activation procedures when they boot up. If not, you can also request the users to skip the privacy settings. And even as an admin, you can disable the local admin creations on the device by here itself. So you can create a profile as per your requirement and you can save the profile through which you can publish these profiles to the devices for, for enrollment. Once the profile has been created, you can start adding the devices. You can add the devices by creating a group for it in the Azure Autopilot enrollment page itself. And then once the devices has been added to the portal, you can select the devices and associate the devices to the appropriate profile you have created. Thereby, once this is done, you can just turn on the Windows 10 laptops, which will automatically enroll or publish our MEMDM profile onto the laptops. So once after this is done, you can go to the enrollment section. Under Azure enrollment, you'll find the Windows 10 laptops getting listed over here. And in order to complete the procedure, you just need to assign the user details. As you could see now, the user information and email options are blank. Just by assigning the users, you, are completely, you have completely onboarded the device into your management scope. So this is how you integrate your MDM server with the Azure AD, and you'll be able to activate the MEMDM client on the Windows 10 laptops or Windows devices. This is going to be the same procedure. And once this is done, you'll be able to apply certain basic device level settings and, and app management, which we can see in the upcoming slides. So now, in order to enroll the Mac devices using Apple Business Manager, this is again the same workflow. You're going to integrate your MDM server with the Apple Business Manager. Thereby, you can add the devices to the Apple Business Manager portal, either using the serial number, and then you can distribute or activate the MEMDM client on the device. So let me log into the Apple Business Manager account. And integrating Apple Business Manager with your MDM solution is even more simple. You just need to go to MDM, Enrollment. You have Apple Enrollment. And you can just add your server details. So first procedure is going to be, you have to download the certificate file from your MDM solution, and you have to upload the files under settings, device management settings, and you can add your MDM server. You can give a name to it, and you can upload the file which we have created. Once this is done, it will generate an S token, which you can upload it on Opt Audit Console in order to complete the integration. It's just like a two-way handshake. You create, you download the file from our server, upload it on the Apple Business Manager portal, and get the S token from the Apple Business Manager, which has been generated based on your MDM details, and you can upload it here to complete the integration. Once this is done, you can go to Apple Business Manager, Device Assignments, and using the serial number details or the order number, or if in case, if you have purchased the devices in bulk, you can just upload the device details using the CSV file. Once this is done, you can choose the actions to assign to a server, and you can choose to which MDM server you would like to map these devices to. So this is how you onboard the Mac devices or Mac computers to our product using the Apple Business Manager. And once this is done, this is how the same procedure. You can just assign the user account to complete the onboarding of Mac computers. So we have discussed about how you can onboard your Windows 10 devices or Windows 10 laptops and Mac devices into our MDM solution. 
in case if you have any questions or if you have any doubts please feel free to post them in the chat section our team can help you out now we can see how you can deploy basic configurations to the onboarded devices to windows 10 laptops and mac computers i'll be happy to show you how we can apply a basic settings like wi-fi vpn or email configurations to your windows 10 laptops and there is also an interesting option called kiosk profile which you can apply to windows 10 laptops it's like locking down the device to a particular application so that for security reasons you'll also be able to apply certain restriction which i'm going to show you now so let's start with windows 10 laptops and the profiles associated to it so as i said before enrollment section is all about onboarding the devices into the management scope and device management tab is helps you to create profiles policies and if you want to distribute documents and application and this is where you have to come for so in order to create profiles you go to the section you can create it applies for the windows 10 on the windows mobile devices too and if as an admin you have the option to enforce the passcode policy to the windows 10 devices if it is if you are using an active directory authentication it's fine but for work group based environment you still have the options to define what type of passcode the end user has to keep on his windows devices or the laptop so you can provide what should be the minimum passcode length either it should be a five digit passcode or a six digit passcode and how frequently the user has to change the passcode say for every two months the user have to keep changing the passcode for security reasons and number of failed attempts if the user exceeds the limit it will do a complete wipe and we also offer certain restrictions for security hardening say you can disable the sd card options you can also restrict camera and screen capture and even you can restrict the users when they connect the usb to the windows 10 laptops and there are certain network level restrictions can also be enforced on windows 10 laptops using our profiles where you can disable the vpn connection or vpn sharing or even through cellular data an application level say i don't want my users to install non-stored application without the approval then you do have the options here and you can also distribute wi-fi profiles using our mdm solution so you can provide the wi-fi ssid number over here and that by providing the passcode details so whenever the users comes within the corporate network or the corporate range the devices will automatically get connected through this wi-fi if you have enabled this option and you can also make the devices to go through a particular network and you can provide the details for your vpn connection through which channel it has to go through and you can also configure email accounts so providing this dynamic variable will automatically associate the devices as per the username and email address configured under the enrollment section so if this is, these are the username then providing this value will automatically as associate the users or associate the devices based on this username and we do offer the exchange active sync profile configuration if you have an on-premise exchange server you can choose the first or op second option and you'll, and you'll be able to fill up the details so feed the required information and you can save the profile to associate and we do provide the kiosk profile like i've said you can lock down the devices to a particular application or a group of application say the kiosk profile will be mostly used by the educational institutions or if for a retail shop where you want the the tablets or the devices to use only certain application then you can go with single app kiosk profile or multi apps where when they unlock the device they can only access to certain application which you configure it in here 
for the UI level, this is how the device is going to look like once after you apply the Krios profile. Say for this Surface Pro tablet, the administrator would have published applications like Microsoft Edge, Alarm Clock, Calculator, and MEMDM, which will only be enabled when they unlock the device. So you can either provide multi multiple applications here, or for educational purposes, they might some might actually apply only a single application that by the students can use only to that application when they unlock the devices. Now for Mac machines, you can still, you have the same options like configuring Wi-Fi profile and security restrictions. And to illustrate the profiles in a better way, what will you do if someone breaks into your Mac computers and gets hold of the corporate data? So how we can proactively prevent such happenings using our MDM solution. To configure profiles for Mac devices, you can go to the profile section. We still have the options to create Apple profile, which applies for both iOS devices, Apple devices, and also MacBooks. So starting from the passcode policy, again, you can enforce what type of passcode the end user has to keep on the MacBooks and comes the restriction. So we have a separate tab for Mac restrictions even, that they can restrict camera screen recording. And in order to prevent the, the data loss, you can also go to security section and you can restrict iTunes file sharing option over here. And you do have Wi-Fi profiles, VPN connections. And again, in order to secure the files available on your MacBooks. We also offer file vault encryption. So you can encrypt your file vault using a personal require key, which you can either display to the users. If not, you can choose the options to know so that only you, the administrator, will can retrieve those key details. So based upon the user request, you can share it with them. And you can also use an institutional level recovery key for encrypting your file vault. And for a safer side, you can also go with both the options, personal and institutional level recovery key. And this is one way where you can encrypt your file vault or your MacBooks in order to save the corporate data within the devices. And we also offer another profile called firmware password. So when a MacBook has been booted apart from this default startup disk, it will prompt the user to provide the passcode details. Say so if the user tries to boot the computer using an external storage device, the, the employee or the user has to provide the password details in order to proceed. So these are certain restrictions which you can apply on a MacBook to secure your corporate data. And once these profiles are applied, there's no way they can revert back unless and they get the recovery key details. So when you don't give the when you don't give the use visibility to the users as an admin, when they raise a request through any of the ticketing tools, say they need the file world encryption key or the former password details, then you can go to the inventory section. Say for an example, the user Walter White would like to boot the computer using an external storage device for his development testing. Then you can go to the security settings tab. You have the option as an admin, you will be able to view what is the firmware password details has to be used for booting up the computer using an external or an internal storage disk apart from the default one. So you can click on, click here to view. You can provide the password details which has been used for, for the desktop center login for which you'll be able to check those details here. And you'll also be able to retrieve the personal recovery key option. So you can just after enabling or after viewing these details, then you'll be able to pass these details to the users. So this is how you encrypt a Mac device using our MDM solution. And in case if you would like to retrieve the details or if you want to share the same with the users, you have the option under inventory. It's not just about Mac computers. Even for Windows, we do provide BitLocker encryption through scripts for 
and which is available under desktop central so you have configurations module and a desktop central through which you can apply scripts to your windows 10 machines thereby encrypting the windows 10 computers even and in order to check the details whether the computer is encrypted or not whether bitlocker and encryption is enforced or not you can go to the inventory section and you'll be able to check those details over here and you can also check the recovery key status available under the security tab of desktop central so down the line even microsoft might completely change their always into the similar to a mobile based platform down the line even apple might come up with the mobile based os so having a management tool like desktop central can actually give you more advantage thereby you can do the legacy management activities like patch management software distribution inventory along with that you'll also be able to cope up with the modern management features like app distribution geo tracking and wiping the corporate details so down the line having desktop central might actually give you a upper hand so we have seen how you can onboard windows 10 laptops and mac computers into our solution and how we can apply basic device level settings to them now let me show you how you can distribute applications to mac and windows 10 devices so first we shall see about how we can distribute applications to macbooks through apple business manager be it apple business manager or for a microsoft store or even for android you'll be this is how this similar workflow will be you have to integrate your mdm server with the apple business manager or google play store or the microsoft business store thereby approving the applications or purchasing the application you can distribute to them so when you when you get the application directly from the business store you have the options to silently deploy it on the device if not the application can only be published to the devices that by the end user has to go to their memdm app on the phone on the phone or the laptops that way they have to initiate it manually but when you go through the store options like this you have the options to silently deploy apps so for for macbooks you have the section called apps and books here so you can just first you have to go to device management app repository and you have apple app management where you can integrate your apple business manager with our mdm server the same procedure once that is done you'll be able to go to apps and books section and you can approve the apps say you would like to deploy this application to the devices and you can choose to which server you want to assign the devices to and you can provide the quantity details for say i want to distribute this application to 10 devices and i can just click on get thereby once the apps are approved you can go to the device management section over here and you will be able to perform a sync which will list down the applications to your, to the section and once the apps are distributed then after you can go to groups and devices section either you can select a group or individual devices and then you'll be able to distribute the application so this is how you add the apps for macbooks and you'll be able to distribute to the viewers and for windows it's going to be the same procedure you have to integrate your MDM server with the Microsoft Business Store and you'll be able to distribute to the end users or end devices. So for this, you have to have the Azure Administrator account and you can go to the App Repository section, Windows Apps, and you'll be able to use your Azure Administrator account to sign in. Thereby accepting the terms and conditions will integrate 
or MDM server with the with your Microsoft Store account. That way, you'll be able to sync the applications directly for distributing. So once first step is going to be the MEMDM app. So as soon as you integrate, it will request you to click on next, which will automatically approve the MEMDM app to your section. Thereby, if in case if you have purchased any other additional application on the business store, it will automatically start to sync. And this sync will happen on a daily basis. If not, you'll also have the options to automate the sync or you can manually sync the applications from the store portal in order to distribute. So once after the apps are synced, you'll, you'll again go to the groups and devices section and you can select the groups. And you'll be able to associate the profile or distribute the applications to your managed devices. So this is how the Microsoft Store portal looks like. Remember before we went into the manage section devices in order to add the devices through autopilot enrollment. Now you have to go to shop for my group where you can search for the required application in the search section. And if you're able to find out the app, you can just click on the app name. And you can choose the get the app option over here. Which will automatically add the app to your inventory. Even if it is a freeware application, it will still show you as the app has been purchased and added to inventory. Once the app has been added, then you can go to app repository section to find out what are the recently added apps over here. In case if you're still not able to find out the application in this portal, you can just perform the sync option over here. So you can also find out the app source, whether it has been added through Business Store or Apple Business Manager. You'll be able to find out those details here. So this is how you add the store application, the Microsoft Store applications to your to our MDM portal, through which you can start distributing them silently on the device. So if the applications are not added through the portal, then you have to go to MEMDM app available on the devices and you have to go to app catalog option. Whereby it will just it just gets published over here, but in order to complete the installation, the user has to manually go and click on install. If it's been imported directly through Apple Business Manager or Microsoft Store, you'll be able to silently deploy the application. That is an advantage. And now we shall see how to silently deploy the Windows Enterprise application. Say if you have your own enterprise software or apps which you would like to distribute through our solution, then we do have an option for you. You can go to device management section again, app repository. You have Windows Enterprise option. So you can choose for the Apex file from here. And the best part here is once you select the Apex file, it's going to fetch the app details and the necessary files related to it. So you can provide the Apple product ID details. And in case if it requires certain dependency file, you still have the option to provide such information even. And if your enterprise application is based, it has to be associated based on the user details, then you do have the options to provide the dynamic variables, which you can also configure along with the app, app upload options. The files are just getting uploaded. They can provide all the necessary information over here and you'll be able to proceed with uploading the details to your server thereby you can start distributing them.
So this is how once after the app Apex file has been loaded, it will fetch what version the file the application is. And if you know the bundle identifier for the device, it can just provide the details over here. And this is where I said about providing the dynamic variables. Say if your enterprise app has to be associated based on the user details, then you can provide the hashtag value and you'll be able to provide the key details over here, for which each and every device which gets the application will automatically associate the profile information to it. So this is how you add the applications to the repository. Once the application has been added, then same way you can go to the groups and devices section. Either you can associate the device to a particular group or you can go to the device section to associate. So this is how you silently deploy a stored application or your enterprise application through our MDM product. So in case if you have any questions so far about app distribution or profile configuration, please feel free to post them in the chat section. Our team can help you out. And last, we can see how you can securely distribute your corporate data using our MDM solution. How long you're going to use your email to share documents or files to your employees. Sometimes it might even get filtered out. So how securely you'll be able to distribute such files using our MDM is what I'm going to show you now. So we have this option called content management over here for which you can add documents and files and you can share it with the users. So I would like to share these documents. I have the option to select to a group or a particular device and you'll be able to associate. Even you can also add files of these types. These are the file list of file types which has been supported in our solution. You can just upload the file. And you can also give a tag to the files you upload. Say I'm adding certain files, 10 to 15 files related to tax related documents and I can give a tag to it which helps the users to view under categories and they'll be able to check the document properties over. So once the files has been added, you can give a tag like you said. And then you can select the files and you'll be able to share it with the users. And the users can just go to MEMTM app. They will have the options called content catalog where they can find out the list of documents published by the administrators. And first you have to download. You have the second option where the downloaded files can be separately seen and you can just click on view to see. And then you have you can also go to categories. This is where I mentioned about giving tags. So if you've given certain tags for certain applications, this is how it's going to get listed under certain categories. So that is how you upload documents and securely share it with the managed devices using our MDM solution. Now we can see certain real-time scenarios and the solution which I've faced in my support experience. I've been in chatting with a lot of customers and they would share certain questions which might I which I felt might be useful for all the attendees over here. Even in case we will consolidate all the questions raised during this training program and we'll also add such questions or scenarios in our next training schedules. The first scenario, we use Active Directory in the organization and is it possible to add Max enrolled in MDM to the organization's Active Directory? Yes, for Windows, it's fine for Max. Yes, we do have the AD asset binding option available under profiles through which you can add your Mac devices into your Active Directory services. Then go to devices section. You have profiles option over here. I said, remember, you can just create a profile for Apple. And you have the AD asset binding profile over here as a payload. So you can choose to which domain you would like to add the Mac devices. So after creating the profile, you're going to associate, right? So you can choose which device has to be associated to this profile. Only those devices will be added to your Active Directory. You can also choose the OU path and device access settings. In case if you want the devices to be accessed only within your corporate network, then you can go with the 
network option. Only if the AD server is reachable, only then the device can be logged in. If you use mobile option, they can use the normal passcode to get in with the device. So this is how you add your Mac data, Mac devices into the Active Directory services. The second scenario, can we share contacts and calendar events to employees iOS devices? Yes, we do have the options here over here. We have the contact sync and calendar sync as a separate payload under Apple profiles. So you can provide the CalDev or CalDev details, the account host name and the details over here. And you can provide you can update the username details as we, as we saw before. So when you provide the details this way and associate the profiles to the devices based on the username updated under the enrollment device section the profile will be associated so you can provide dynamic variables and create a profile for syncing the calendars and contact information the third scenario how can we secure all the network communication in the managed devices Remember, we do have VPN settings and we also have web content filtering where you can blacklist certain websites through which you can secure a communication on the devices. And we do have global HTTP proxy, which ensures all the device communication will, will go through a particular tunnel or the proxy details, whatever you mentioned here. Either the devices are connected through the corporate network or through the private network. It, it will still go out using the proxy details mentioned over here and you can apply the restrictions on your network under this global proxy so this ensures all the devices gets routed through a particular tunnel thereby making the network more secure and you can after creating the profiles as you know you can go to the device management section you can create different profiles for different purposes and you can select the groups or the devices individually and you'll be able to assign the profiles to them does mdm on-premise offer options to prevent data loss due to server downtime is yes, when it comes to on-premise solution of course you have to make sure the devices are always be managed even if anything absence to the primary server so we for this we do have the failover server which can be established onto your mobile device manager plus on-premise or the desktop central solution, which will act like a secondary server. It will periodically monitor the status of the primary one. And if the primary server is down for more than 10 seconds, automatically the secondary server is going to come up. For this service, you have to have the failover server license and you need to have the MSSQL database for it so that you can map both the servers to a particular DB. And scenario five, can we decide the data that is being fetched and displaced by MDM for management? Can the same be informed to our users? After, like GDPR and other policies, we do have an options for the administrator to decide what information has to be collected from the employees. So you can go to admin section and the privacy settings. You have under privacy settings, you have device privacy where you can choose what information can be collected and cannot be collected from the managed devices so you can modify say i don't want to collect the phone number information and serial number details from the managed devices the personal device especially and even wiping the de devices can also be disabled from this page like remote command and geo tracking the location if you like to get those information you can choose collect and display so you can create the settings as per requirement, which can also be seen by the end users from the MEMDM app. If they go to privacy policy, they can see what details has been updated. And sixth scenario, what are the options available to secure the MDM on-premise server from unauthorized access, especially the server console? So first, 
in order to access the server itself, we provide the import SSL certificate, remember, for making the communication more secure. And even to get into the console, you have the option to enforce the security policies for an admin. So you can secure the authentication through a password policy. So in order to log into the MDM console, even the admin has to go through certain password norms. At least they should have a minimum passcode length of five digit, and they have to periodically change the password. And not just about the AD authentication or this password, you can also enable the two-factor authentication. The administrator has to provide the one-time passcode or through Google Authenticator, they have to authenticate the logins in order to get into the product console. So this is how you can secure even the administrator's login to, to the management console. And scenario seven, how do I secure the personal information when it's been downloaded or exported as a report. For this, we have the options available under admin tab, export settings. So you can mask the personal information when, when it comes to exporting the reports. So if, if you don't want to mask the details, you can just choose to not mask or remove PI. If not, you can enable this option and save the settings. Thereby, when a report has been sent through scheduled reports or when it's been exported manually from the product console, you can rule out the personal details. Let me show you one example. So you can go to the inventory section. Let me enable the email address. So when I try to export these details or the report, and this is how the UI will look like. This is how the information will be blacked out. So you can see the serial number, the email address, and all of that information will be masked. So this ensures most security and more privacy for the employees. And even when it comes to reporting functionalities, the administrators can only, those who have access to the product console can only check these informations. All right, so we have come to the end of the training program. So in case if you have any questions, please feel free to post them in the chat section. And like I've said, if you're an evaluator, if you just want to have a one-on-one -on -one session with our technical expert, please raise a demo request where we can schedule a 30-minute session with you and we'll be able to get the requirement of yours and we'll be able to assist you further. So please rate us on a scale of one to five, where five is the best. And also please spread some love using the hashtag available slash mobile device manager plus a free training or slash manage engine in the social medias like Twitter and Facebook. And I thank each and everyone for joining the webinar once again. Thank you for your time and I wish you a Merry Christmas and Happy New Year in advance. We'll keep you updated on the next training program through email. Thank you.